Well, thank you, Madam Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity that we have to discuss the, the, the benefits of the Keystone XL pipeline, not only from a resource perspective, but really from one of, of, of public diplomacy with our closest neighbors and, and, and allies in Canada. I want to thank Senator Hoven for his leadership. He's been pushing on this issue for, for years now. Um, and this measure that you have introduced um, certainly builds on that. I think the provision that you have in there as it relates to, to the judicial review is actually an improvement. And so I'm glad that we have this in, in front of us. Um, and I say that, it's like, well, I really wish that we, wouldn't, we weren't sitting here years, years after um, the time when a decision should have been made, could have been made by this administration. I am one who um, has a, I, I take a very cautious approach when you have congressional intervention in an administrative process. I don't think that that's the ideal way to go forward. Um, but sometimes you don't have any other options. When the administration um, either delays or subverts the process, there is a role for Congress, and, and that's where we're sitting here today. I mentioned the issue of, of, of public diplomacy. Diplomacy doesn't come easy. It takes work. It takes work on both sides. You can't take your friends for granted. And, and our relationship with Canada is one that, that does take work, and it requires making decisions. I can't tell you the number of, of government um, officials that I have had come to my office from Canada that are kind of asking, what's going on here in the United States? What, what is happening that, that this country um, or this administration doesn't doesn't understand, doesn't get it. Uh, it was just yesterday that we learned that the Canadian government approved the Northern Gateway Pipeline Project. This is going to send Alberta crude to the global markets in Asia, potentially elsewhere around the world. But this is a reflection of the fact that has been demonstrated really time and time again here, efforts to block production fail at blocking production. Um, but what they do do is they succeed in diverting and delaying much needed energy, as you have mentioned, Madam Chairman, elsewhere, and depriving the people in this country of those jobs and that opportunity. It, it deprives our economy of the prosperity that I believe we will see result from approval of this, of this infrastructure. I've, I've repeated many times that the United States and Canada are joined at the well, a, a terminology that uh, when it comes to energy really does make sense. Think about it. There are 17 operating oil pipelines. There are another 30 electric transmission lines. There are 29 natural gas pipelines that cross the border uh, with, with Canada and Montana and Washington, North Dakota, Michigan, Minnesota, New, New York, Vermont, Idaho, and Maine. All those pipelines, all those pipelines have been clearly determined to be in the public interest, and Keystone is as well. So it's time to move forward. As a committee, I, as I mentioned in my opening, I think this should be an easy lift for us, but how we move forward from here is going to be, be the real determining factor. This is a positive step forward, but, but I, I sincerely hope that those of us that support these jobs, that support this economic opportunity for our country that support a strong relationship with our, our friends in Canada, that they will work with us to, to get Senator Reid to take up this bill, take it up promptly, so that it can be fully considered in an open way and adopted and sent to the House for passage. So let's hope that this original bill gets a vote on the Senate floor quickly. And I pledge to work with, with you, Madam Chairman, on this and others that, uh, that would agree that this is in our nation's best interest.